Yeah, the listeners are going to be really shocked about something we've got to reveal to them. Oh, yeah. You're not actually listening to us live. Yeah. We record this a couple of months before it goes out. So it may seem like the end of February to you, but it's actually the beginning of January to us. Yeah. This is something you all know already at this point in time, but we've had suffered a couple of losses this week. First of all, David Bowie. That's a way to start your Monday morning, finding out about that. Yeah. And um, the one that, um, not that we're not sad about David Bowie, but the one that affects both me and Matt Moore, Alan Rickman has passed away at the age of 69. They were both 69. Yeah, which is quite scary. It's scary, and they both died of cancer. Yeah. I well, I, I know. so shocked in a way. I, I know. Cause like, I think it's because we it, didn't know that they had cancer. Yeah. yeah. It's like, a shock to us. I didn't even know Alan Rickman was ill. Me like, either. It, I didn't know either of them were ill. Well, David Bowie, I knew he had, like, heart trouble, and it wouldn't have, I'm not saying I was expecting him to die soon, but it wouldn't have surprised me to hear that he'd been ill or something like that, because he hasn't... He, he's looked a little bit kind of ill recently. Yeah. So... I know listeners are usually expecting us to take the piss out of stuff like this. Yeah. But we are actually a bit sad, so we decided yeah. to pay tribute. This episode has nothing to do with them. Yeah. This episode's about Elvis, but we decided to pay tribute, even if it is a late one. We yeah. figured we should, because yeah. they did they did so much for the world. Like, David Bowie, I didn't follow him because I wasn't of his era. He, yeah, because yeah, well. I was born way way after he well, started yeah. out most of the people that are crying about him weren't part of his era yeah that's really. true but i yeah but i'm not that into music yeah. either so i didn't follow yeah. him so I, I knew some of his work on the screen and stuff and i did know some of his songs but he did seem like a really nice person he was really yeah. into equality and being yourself and not having to fake who you are and he gave us duncan jones as well so yeah. credit to him for that yeah. And Alan Rickman, we just grew up with him, really. Yeah. Everything from Die Hard, Robin Hood, to Harry Potter. We literally grew up with him watching Harry Potter. Yeah, I have to admit, the Robin Hood film, he was creepy in that. He was. That uh, he's the only thing that I can actually. remember in that film as yeah. well. But, yeah, yeah. Ro- yeah, Alan Rickman, his roles are too numerous to count. Yeah. I'm just going to mention consistently one been that good. I really like. It's The Search for John Gissing. It's quite like a comedic role. Yeah. That one. And that one's Ooh, really I, good. He was hilarious in Dogma. Oh, yeah. That, that, <laughs> that was funny. That. Yeah. So, yeah, we decided we should start the podcast with um, something sweet that we had to say. Yeah. And they will they will definitely be missed because I found out about Alan Rickman at lunchtime yesterday at work. And I was about to, like, bo- as I was going back to work, it was at the end of lunch when I decided, oh, yeah. I'll, maybe I'll log into Facebook. I have five minutes. Shouldn't have done that. And, like, I was so close to tears the whole afternoon. (laughs) I was just like, no, this is not happening. This is not happening. Yeah. I I just... I can't read how out of the blue that one was, though. It was. What upsets me even more is reading, like, people's testimonials of him. People that actually knew him. Yeah. Think about how it was affecting us. We don't actually know him personally. Yeah. Yet we're so upset about it. Yeah. And reading what they have to say, and he just seems like an all-round wonderful human being both him and bowie yeah i i I don't want people to think we've forgotten about bowie but yeah yeah but wow so um it's been a shit week for us yeah and we thought we'd bum you out at the beginning of an episode yeah (laughs) yeah but yeah we don't have any genuine for once yeah we tried to be genuine rather than have a bit of a chat chat and have a bit of a laugh and take the piss yeah because it was either that or we were going to do a separate episode on how... And it would just be 30 minutes of us crying about <laughs> Alan Rickman. Yeah. So he will be missed. He will genuinely be missed. And if I have kids, I can't wait to show them all his numerous works. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were going to call them Alan or something like that. I could that. do that, like in Harry Potter. Yeah, where he names them after. Yeah, he names them Zeverus. Yeah. It was, it was a beautiful touch of... Oh, God, he died in Harry Potter too. Yeah. Oh, too yeah. Uh, anyway, so um, because <laughs> usually we start with a polite chit chat and have a bit yeah. of a joke and stuff, and then we do intro music and go into it. Yeah. I don't think we can do the polite chit chat and have a joke at this point. No. So should we just head straight into the intro music? Yeah, I, I like how you also think we have a polite chat first. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's usually that's doing something each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's polite for us. Yeah, I suppose. This is the nicest we've ever Simple, been to yeah. each other. I know. It's odd. 
Yeah, so we, we can't but, let that um, last too long. Yeah, but yeah, so we should probably get into this week's episodes. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's well, sorry to have bummed you out already. Yeah. We usually wait until we're at least in the middle before mm. we get depressed and talk about Matt's parents or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What we need is um, a little less conversation, if you ask me. And a little more action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> intro music. Yeah, intro music. <laughs> That one works out quite well. We can be genuine sometimes. I know. Where we talk about stuff. Only about Harry Potter, though. A <laughs> yeah, fictional gonna... world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say binge watch him later. Yeah. With Die Hard, my favourite Christmas movie. Anyway, so this week's episode, mm. Matt, do you want to tell them? It was your idea to do this, actually, I think. Was it? Oh. Uh, I forgot about that. This week we're doing about Elvis Presley and whether he's really dead. Or is he still with us as an Elvis yeah, impersonator? Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is he out there I somewhere? already know my answer. We don't even need to do this episode. I know my answer. I've got a feeling it's okay, going to be our, the same our, as our listeners are a bit thick, mm. but please know who Elvis Presley is. Yeah, because I mean, how could you not... How could you be part of this world? your whole entire life and not know who Elvis Presley is. Like, really? Even if you don't listen to his music, mm. if you've never listened to one of his songs, you'd know who Elvis Pro- Presley is. Yeah. You only need to see his face to recognise him. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that little less conversation thing, that was a lyric. Yeah. So if, yeah. if listeners didn't get that. It was a very intelligent segue. Intelligent. Yeah, you're becoming better at doing segues. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise those um, little scooter things with that handles were called segways. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my friend fell off one of them. <laughs> yeah. They, they scare me. Do they? Yeah, I'm just like, what if I fall off? Like, how how does it work? Does it? Are you supposed to balance on it and then it goes places? I'm not actually sure myself because I've, never, I've not, never been on one. But they work somehow. Yeah, apparently it's impossible to fall off them, but... George I think I'd find a way. I think I'd find a way. Yeah. And I'd break something. Well, that's what my friend did. He'd break his wrist, arm, one of the two. No, not arm. Is this the, is this the friend that was horrible to me? Good. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you have two Asians in your life, a prick. I anyway. Know. So greedy. <laughs> <laughs> did you know Lana's technically an Asian? Is she? Yeah. How? That's what I was asking her, because, like, we met a Syrian guy, and he was asking us to guess where he's from, because he figured out Lana was Syrian. And um, he said he was a type of Asian, and then she guessed Syrian. So, my whole whole friendship with her has been a lie. It's not She's Syrian, and she's Asian. Wow. Syria's I don't know. Asia, I guess though. part of I guess part of Syria is in part of Asia. I don't know. Are you asking sure me of all people? <laughs> You're asking me. <laughs> no, Syria isn't in Asia. That's how is she Asian? No, it's it's not possible that. Anyway, it's, we just said see, we just said in our little intro bit that we don't have time for like a little chit chat. We can't ah, go into it. It is actually it's Western Asia. Yeah. I didn't, Did you just Google it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. saw you do that. Uh, I just managed to Google to prove myself wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. That's the worst feeling yeah. in the world. You know? Like, you know what? I'm so right. I'm so going to look this up now. And then I was like, oh, yeah. I don't have time to look it up after you've looked it up and realised you're wrong. Yeah. But I don't have time to do that. I'll deal with it later. <laughs> yeah. We'll agree to disagree. <laughs> anyway, Elvis yeah. Presley. Yeah. So he was a musician. Born 1935, died the 16th of August 1977. He had numerous hits, including his first... uh, His debut single was Heartbreak Hotel, wasn't it? Yeah. That was released January 1954. 54, yeah. Yeah, and he had quite a promising career till he got drafted into the army in 1958. So he was only working for four four full years till he was drafted into the US Army. That was after World War Two, right? So, like, I don't understand why people were getting drafted into the army after World War Two. Um, America were involved in a couple of wars after that. Oh yeah, because then they did the Japanese and the Vietnamese. I think there was and... a Korean War as well. well did they just like... fight with everyone? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, like, <sighs> but then America. Were... America's that one person in class that always wants to start an argument with someone, isn't it? Yeah. You've got that one person that was like, no, I'm right about this, and they just get into a long-winded argument, and you're just like, fuck off, you prick. I mean, That's usually me, isn't it? (laughs) It's a lot to do, I think, with the the whole communist stuff. It was all heading towards the Cold War kind of thing. 
oh, pretty okay. much, I think. And now it's just that they want oil. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And anyone that denies it, take a look at how much oil those places that America want to attack have and don't hand over to the Americans. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> these wars are not just... Why do we get so political? Yeah, we're meant to be talking about Elvis. <laughs> Every time we get political. Anyway, yeah. so he was drafted into the army. I think he still did. He was still releasing music. I think he'd recorded a few albums worth or something like that of music before yeah. he w- was drafted into the army. And they were releasing it while he was away and he was still making public appearances. Yeah. By the way, listeners, we're not going to go into too much detail <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because we always do that and it always runs really long. So yeah. we're going to give you an overview because we expect you to know who he is. If you don't, press pause, go away, Google. Yeah. All right, welcome back. He was based in Friedberg in Germany where he served his two years and he met his future wife, Lisa Marie, Marie Presley, when she was 14 years old. Matt mm. already knows my view on this subject. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. Slick, man, slick. (laughs) Slick. After he left, he continuously wrote to her, even though he was continuing his career, and he was in his early 20s, and she's a 14-year-old girl, and he's famous. It just proves that famous people can get away with anything, can't they? Yeah. He moved her to Graceland. Graceland, sorry. He moved moved her to Graceland and apparently wasn't having sex with her. Uh, I so believe that. Apparently wasn't having sex with her while she was finishing off school. Mm. Classy. You never know. I mean, he's could have been a very good Christian. Yeah. Mm. So all the while this was happening, he was continuing his career. Yeah. Uh, I think he he was releasing music, but he spelt, spent the bulk of the early 60s, I think most of the 60s, just acting in films. And that was around the time that they yeah. were married anyway. So they got married in 1967, was it? Um. Yeah, because he was about 22 by the time. Yeah. So, so at least he waited to marry her. Yeah. Didn't wait to move her in. Yeah. And um, apparently he didn't actually want to marry her. He was being pressured into marrying her. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, during the, he continued his career as a musician, but he sort of stopped during the 60s to act in various Hollywood productions. And they weren't would, very well received, though. No, so. no, no, they weren't. No. He, he, he did very badly. <laughs> so, towards the end of the 60s, he did try and revive his career you as a musician. You the time of the Beatles, and they were the big thing. But then he started that whole rock and roll movement at how yeah. musicians should be sexy. He, Yeah, he's well, the one that brought sexiness into the musicians. His hips, apparently. They those were hips. Loads. Those hips. Like, I've seen that clip that, went, that caused an uproar. I watched yeah. it a few years ago in media or something. Yeah. It didn't seem sexy to me because obviously I've been exposed to so many more hips. Uh, hips, yeah. <laughs> uh, but the shaking of the hips, yeah. He he grew a large female fan base, and yeah. Also, the hatred of many parents worldwide, or well, thousands, millions of parents worldwide, and it was quite controversial. But he was a trendsetter, so I think he sort of paved the way for the Beatles with the rock and roll thing. Yeah, they yeah. wouldn't have existed without Elvis. Yeah, there, no, there's a lot of yeah. people that wouldn't have existed without Elvis. He he didn't just stick to rock and roll as well. He did loads of other things. He did pop, he did country, he did rhythm oh, and yeah. blues. He, he's a really talented singer, I think. He, he No, he really, really was. And he has such a distinctive voice. Mm. Like, popularity-wise, if people don't know him, yeah. <laughs> if people don't know him, popularity-wise, Matt, I'm not going to insult him, popularity-wise, he's like Justin Bieber. Oh, oh. No, no, popularity-wise. I didn't say talent-wise. I I didn't say talent-wise. I specified popularity-wise. Because I don't get it. I don't Mm. understand the Bieber phenomenon, but he has fans everywhere. So Elvis is... I think his um, audience may have been a bit more mature. I don't know. I think it's like teenage girls, though. So his fan base is as rabid as the Justin Bieber's ones or the One Direction ones. Because off the top of my head, they're the only ones I can think of with rabid fan bases. Yeah. They are, like, the forefront of it, aren't they? The ones yeah. with the crazy kids that love them. Yeah, I mean, at least bands back then, like the Beatles and Elvis, at least they were talented musicians yeah. that these people were going crazy for. Yeah, but then I think people are more gullible now. They listen to yeah. whatever the media tells them to, and the media is telling them to love Justin Bieber and love One Direction. Yeah. They're not very good. Apparently One Direction have broken up, though, so... Yeah. That's good news. Yeah, they're doing everyone a favour. <laughs> Yeah, doing everyone a favour as long as none of them go solo and they just go back to their homes, never leave it. 
<laughs> anyway, where were we? <laughs> See, yeah. This is why I said we're not going into detail, because I knew we'd accidentally go into detail. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so, oh, so the 60s, he yeah. spent acting, and towards the end of it, he revived his career as a musician. But during the 60s, when he was acting, he did have numerous affairs with all his leading ladies. And yeah. I doubt that would have stopped when he stopped acting, because he probably would have just fucked the groupies instead. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm very judgmental about Elvis. Still don't like the fact that he hooked up with a 14-year-old girl. So during his career, he did dabble in substances. Yeah. Like all musicians seem to. Yeah, we're not talking about, you know, prick sticks and glue and stuff like that. Prick stick, even if you sniff it, nothing happens. Prick stick's a safe one. That's why kids, they have it in school and stuff. If you sniff it, nothing will happen. I've tried. Yeah, Yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure that that there's loads of kids off their heads. Prick stick. <laughs> prick stick. Yeah. <laughs> you know what my favourite one was? You know when you were like in primary school, you have the the glue, the liquid glue. Oh yeah, yeah. And then you just paint your hand with it and then peel it off. <laughs> that was my favourite thing in the world to do in school when I was younger. Yeah. Not the work, not the playtime, not the meeting yeah. friends. Playing with that bloody glue. Yeah. That's my favourite thing ever. Easily amused, aren't we? I am. I really am. <laughs> anyway. He did double in a lot of substances. Most of it was prescribed medication, but we'll go into that a bit later. And um, his marriage to Priscilla... Did we even... We said her name, right? His marriage to Priscilla produced one child exactly nine months after their their wedding, so I think we figured out why they got married. (laughs) And they only had the one child. Yeah. And I mentioned before he had loads of affairs and he was off his face most of the time. Apparently he'd said to Priscilla that he's never slept with a woman who had a child. Yeah. So clearly their sex life wasn't all that. Yeah. And eventually their marriage did break down, at, which led to their divorce in 1975, was it? Yeah. 1975. I think it was finalised 1976 or something. Something like that. So that was only a, t- a couple of years, a couple of years before his passing. So after that, he did up his intake of drugs He did a shit ton, basically. Again, we'll go into that a bit later. (laughs) He did a shit ton of drugs. He wasn't as dedicated to his work. He didn't spend as much time in the studio producing music. Yeah. Also, when he was on tour, he tended to, like, mumble through songs as well, apparently. That's what I've heard. Yeah, and his fans were really dissatisfied. If you think about the Bieber fans and the One Direction fans, they'd never admit to being dissatisfied. Yeah. Elvis fans were admitting to being dissatisfied. He gained a lot of weight, like a lot of weight. Yeah, I mean, because if, if you I, if you see the photos comparing him to when he was like young, he looks yeah, like he was a completely sexy, different person. fit man when he was young. Yeah, and I know I know as someone ages, their body goes downhill. But he was only in his thirties when he died, wasn't he? He was like thirty five. Yeah, something like that, isn't it? Was he? No, he wasn't thirty five. He was forty two. Forty two. Yeah. What, what so, makes yeah, but that's me? still fairly young. That's still fairly yeah. young. Do you know what makes me? He's younger than Leonard Cohen. But Leonard Cohen's like, he's still, still around. Cooking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He would be 75 this year, Elvis Presley, right? Yeah. Bloody no. hell. No, he'd be... Oh, no, 2016. He'd be... He'd be 76 yeah. this year. No, 79. No, 79. What, what am I doing with my... Oh, I forgot. I was counting from <laughs> the album. Okay, again, this is something we're going to go into afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we get to the theories bit. Yeah. I was counting from that. Anyway, he did a lot of drugs. He gained a lot of weight. And eventually it got a bit much for him. And his fiance, he did get engaged shortly after he got his divorce was final to a lady called Ginger Allen. Al Alden, Ginger Alden. Oh, yeah. um, Ginger Alden found him in the toilet, keeled over. And called the ambulance, obviously, because, yeah, why wouldn't you? Called the ambulance. Um, But then he was pronounced dead at 3.30pm on the 16th of August, 1977. Yeah. So we gave you basically the cliff notes because you should already know this shit, okay? Yeah. I know usually we go into so much detail and we go off topic, but we decide to give you all the highlights before we get to the bit we actually want to talk about. Yeah, and that's his being dead yeah you're lucky we actually went through any of that with you yeah i think we're being quite like informative and educational here right now yeah all right so the guy died right <laughs> that's that's our start this yeah next portion of our episode the guy died 
Mm. How I understand it happened was that he was really constipated and he was yes. he had just had a heart attack straining so much. Well, there are some issues with the course of death. Cause of death, I think. Yeah. Course of death. Cause of death. Again, I was going to go into that later, but seeing as though we skipped it. We, we were fast. We were efficient this week. Yeah. We managed to get to the point fairly quickly. Um, the cause of death, there were multiple... Well, it's not multiple autopsies done, but I think a couple of different coroners took a look at it. The first diagnosis that was released to the public was that he died of polypharmacy. I'm going to tell you straight off the bat, I probably should have Googled that what that was. Because <laughs> I just realised yeah, I didn't. I don't know. To right. me, that sounds like there's more than one pharmacy. But yeah, I, I think it. a polypharmacy <laughs> means um, many medications. Ah, adverse drug reactions. That's what it is. Oh, OK, that's... Polypharmacy is the use of four or more medications by a patient, generally adults aged over this, over 65 years old. OK, then. So that was the first official cause of death that was released to the public. But then people thought it smelled cover-up because apparently you can only detect polypharmacy in living patients, living people. Yeah, well, that, that's funny you used to say that because that's exactly the same reason why people are suspicious about the next cause of death that was put forward, uh, which is irregular heartbeat. But that that's another um, thing that you can only detect when the patient's alive. Mm. So people. So it are seems like it's more what is pondering out loud by the coroners. Yeah. Another one is he possibly had anaphylactic shock from some. Because he was taking a shit ton of drugs at this point. Yeah. From one of the drugs that he was taking, because I think he was allergic to codeine specifically. Yeah. And one of the drugs might have had codeine in it. Another theory of his death, another cause of death that's been thrown out there, was the a drug overdose, obviously. Yeah. And then there was one about him having an enlarged heart. But I, I can How does that. the heart grow? I don't understand that. Um, if you put it under enough strain, it does. People, oh. people who take drugs tend to their la- their hearts get larger. Mm, okay. Well, quite a, quite a couple of people like um, Peter Sellers had a really large heart by the time he died, and he did oh. like a lot of like the um, a lot of like the sex dr- drugs, you know, like Viagra and other stuff like that. That tends to oh, make okay. your heart grow if you take oh, too okay. much. Oh, that's the same with everything, really. And right, smoking I... and stuff like that can do it as well. All right, thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because there were so many different conflicting theories about his cause of death and the public reaction towards it, eventually in 1994, I think a coroner reviewed the notes, or they actually reviewed the body, but even though... I think it's for the notes because there would be no body at that point, would there? Um, <laughs> so, reviewed the notes and said that he probably died of a sudden heart attack, which yeah, kind of understands things. So he was overweight, he was eating a lot, he was constipated. He was a drug addict. I was, when I was younger, I got told that he was he died on the toilet seat, pants down, because he was constipated, yeah. trying to take a shit while eating a hamburger. <laughs> so I don't know how much of that story was true. I don't, I don't think it's that. I mean, it's not a nice way to go. No, it's not. There was once a which case is, he had a stroke on the toilet. And he was literally on the toilet. Whereas I think oh, Elvis, Elvis nice actually fell onto the floor, from what I understand. Yeah, but he could fall off the toilet onto the floor. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so those are the, a few theories of, well, a few causes of deaths that I've been pondered about. Mm, but uh, I will say this, he had a GP. Well, I don't think they call it GP in America, do they? I don't know what they call it over there. A personal physician, a yeah. personal doctor that he'd go to see called Jerry Francisco. Yeah. And get this, he prescribed him 10,000 doses of various drugs in the year that he died, eight yeah. months. Jeez. Over the course of eight months. Yeah. And he didn't get put to jail. Put to jail? He didn't get sent to jail. Yeah, this this sounds a bit like the whole Michael Jackson thing, It does. It? The more I read about it, I was like, this is exactly what happened to Michael Jackson. He was about to go on tour as well. Well, he wasn't about to go on tour. He was doing a residency, but you know what I mean. Yeah. But it's he didn't go to jail. Like, that... I mean, he got his medical licence taken away from him, but who gives a shit? A man that prescribes 10,000 doses of any medication within eight months... Yeah. <laughs> ...should get sent to jail. I remember I have a cream... I used to have a cream that I used to put on my body when I was younger. I broke one of the pots once, so I needed to go back for another prescription. And that was earlier than I should have done, apparently. I didn't realise they timed it. 
but I had took such a grilling from the doctor. That was for a cream. Yeah. Because I needed my prescription early. He was like, that should last a month. And then he was like, well, I broke the box. It was cracked and it broke even more. And he was like, do you have it with you? And I was like, no, I threw it out because it was full of cream. It was dropping everywhere. And then he was like, oh, I really can't do this. And I was like, okay, then I don't have any cream. I was like, okay. So it was like a 10 minute long conversation. Eventually I got it, but that was just for a cream. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe our body doctor's cream. a bit better over here. Maybe. Maybe, maybe this doctor's just a bit of a prick. He should be in jail. Uh, they tend, it does tend to be like the celebrity doctors, though. I mean, and they get paid off, paid to do whatever the celebrity wants, and they get away with it. Yeah, pretty much. All I'm saying is that his cause of death is this guy, Jerry Francisco. <laughs> he, no, but seriously though, I don't <laughs> care if he had an enlarged heart. I don't care if it was drug overdose. Yeah. I don't care if it was the constipation that led to a heart attack. Jerry Francisco killed Elvis Presley. I I, I like that. If you were going to write the death certificate, when if the cause of death you just put Jerry Fra- Francisco, that's what I would do. <laughs> First of all, he's a personal doctor, so he should. Mm. Well, he shouldn't be prescribing him ten thousand doses <laughs> of any drugs. To be honest, yeah. I, I, but even if he did, he should keep track of him if he's prescribing him that much drugs. Yeah, and make sure he's actually doing all right and he's not going to about to drop dead. Yeah. I and mean, maybe raise some questions. It's unethical, doctors. If if a patient is about to harm themselves or something like that, even if it's unwillingly or unwittingly, doctors have to get involved, call other authorities, because I know the patient doctor confidentiality only goes so far. I know that. I yeah. work for the NHS. So sometimes that works in my favour on knowledgeable stuff. Yeah. I had to take a course on this. Yeah. Basically, Elvis, at this point, he wasn't mentally capable of making his own decisions. Yeah. So that decision should have been taken out of his hands. Yeah. But then his family, they seem, they were enablers. Yeah. Like, they fired his bodyguards because they were speaking out about his drug use. His own stepbrother admitted that. Yeah. That's just... So his bodyguards cared more about his health than his family. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. Celebrities... So should I put his family on the death certificate yeah. next to Joe yeah. Francisco? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that's what celebrities like to do. They just like to surround themselves with people who've fallen all over them. So, mm. well, that's, that's what some celebrities do, not all of them. <laughs> yeah, not all of them. I don't want to tie I think, them all I think musicians the are the worst kind of celebrity, though. Yeah. Because if you're an actor, you're not selling yourself, you're selling your character. Yeah. If you're... I'm trying to think of another type of celebrity. If you're a tennis player, again, you're not selling yourself. <laughs> you're selling your sports and the clothing that you wear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you're a musician... All you have is yourself. Yeah. You're the product. You're what people buy. Yeah. So. <sighs> I just like the idea of some tennis player turning up at Wimbledon off his head on drugs and. Oh, no. They, do, like, they actually do drug testing for yeah. sports. Maybe they should do drug testing for anything. Yeah. Every, jo- every job. Yeah. And actually, you know, life wouldn't be as fun then. No. That means we'd have to do it. <laughs> I'm... That's when you become unemployed. That, is that why you became unemployed? No, oh, my I God. They were, they were introduced. Drugs. <laughs> no, no, but they were going to introduce drug testing, weren't they? <laughs> they already do, actually. Well, they haven't managed have to go through it yet. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, they they, they oh, work. Wow. They get, have people like turning up drunk and stuff like that. Because yeah, the drug lasts sometimes. Because you know, yeah, it's it stays in your system for at least yeah, three can't. days. Yeah. So. so all you have to do is make sure you don't take drugs for three days leading up to drug tests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, yeah. so um, yeah. we've gone through his life and death mm. it, it should be a, a, an interesting fact to point out is that um his the actual results of his autopsy won't be released until 2027 oh, yeah. which is uh, which has um been suspicious to some people as well i don't think that's suspicious they do that with a lot of things mm. i mean they're lucky it's going to get released yeah 2027 isn't that far far away not now it isn't but if you remember it wasn't the then it was 30 it's 50, 50 years it's, that's not a long time. It's not because some people sometimes you have these things that are on uh, sealed indefinitely or sealed for a hundred years or sealed for one hundred and fifty years. I don't think fifty years is a long time. Okay. And I didn't realise they make autopsy reports public. Well, sometimes I do. figured that was class- classified information. I don't want people to know how I died when I die. I don't. It's, I, I think it's that we're used to whenever anyone dies these days, you find out what the autopsy says oh i just realized we introduced the episode talking about people's deaths and the episodes about someone that died yeah 
<laughs> oh man. Okay. I don't. I didn't even realise that autopsy reports were made public. So I, yeah, I didn't find that suspicious at all. I was just like, oh, they're releasing the autopsy ro- report. Okay then. Mm. I well, I don't know. It's like it's like um, it's, how, it's like how we found out Philip Seymour Hoffman died and stuff like that. It just kind of gets mm. released these days. Well, they have to confirm some sort of cause of death. Yeah. And Philip Seymour Hoffman, he was quite a young guy. It's not like he was yeah. going to die of natural causes. Yeah. Well, the thing. But Elvis we did was get we young. did get a cause of death for yeah. Elvis. It's just they were conflicting. Mm. But then, like all of the um, coroners did think it was heart related, didn't they? It's just the pressure. They didn't know where the pressure on the heart came from. Yeah. I think that was the thing. <laughs> Pretty And much. it came from Jerry Francisco. Anyway. God, poor guy. <laughs> yeah. You know what? He basically killed someone, so... I'm being very judgmental this yeah, episode, aren't I? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway. These guys are going to get in the head, his family. <laughs> anyway, Matt, we stayed on point, okay? Yeah. This episode, we're being good. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Listeners are probably going to hate this episode, mm. but we're being good. So, we've talked about the life of Elvis. we talked about the death of Elvis. Now we need to talk about his afterlife. Yeah, and why people think he's still alive. <gasps> because he is. You, he you actually me in think my he's... Dreams. Really? No. <laughs> 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 Should we go through some of the reasons people think he's alive? Yes. Because, again, I don't think we need to go into people thinking he's alive because everyone should fucking know that. Yeah, the most obvious reason is the sightings of him. Yeah. And, um, yeah, because he's made some quite surprising ones since he died. Yeah, the Muhammad Ali one. Yeah. That's funny. Well, apparently... I actually saw that picture. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, no, okay, well, first of all, there are public sightings where people have said they've yeah. seen him, even to this day, when mm. I don't understand, because if he was alive today, he would not look anything like he looked back then i know <laughs> so i don't understand how people think it's elvis but whatever and also it could just be someone that looks like him yeah there are six people in the world that have the th- exact same face as you yeah. not just elvis everyone because there's only so many different ways you can look yeah yeah the chances are he's got plenty of people that some people that might look identical to him some people might look similar to him also there's elvis impersonators everywhere yeah you might just be seeing one of those. Yeah, and some of them actually do look quite a lot like him, so... They do, and some of them really sound like him as well. Yeah. Again, we'll go on to that later. Some of them really sound yeah. like him as well. Yeah, I don't believe any of these um, witness statements. Yeah. Even though, like, I think the main reasoning behind the, um, we believe Elvis is real troop of people, people... There's an actual group, I can't remember what the name is, what it's called. Let me just take a look. It's called the Elvis is Alive group of believers. Wow, <laughs> what an imaginative yeah, there's an title. actual group of called <laughs> Elvis is Alive. <laughs> yeah. So they say that we should put stock in all these witness accounts because they're so numerous. Yeah. But they're so numerous because everyone knows Elvis. Yeah. If everyone knew the lady from next door that died, then there will be numerous accounts of that. Yeah. it's. I, I was reading one um, thing that was saying... Um, People like George Harrison and John Lennon have died, but you don't, you know, you don't see images of them going round. You do? Of being still, yeah, but not to the same degree no, as you, Elvis. No. But then I was like, there wasn't, there's, there's not a load of John Lennon impersonators out there. Though. Also, because there weren't, didn't, weren't there a lot of people that saw him die? Because he died yeah, on the he street. Was shot. <laughs> yeah, so there's, there's not many people that can say that yeah. John Lennon is still alive. Yeah, it's. I, I didn't get that. Yeah, me either. Yeah. But, yeah, so mm. there's that. But I don't, again, I don't put much stock in it because pe- there are people that probably look exactly the same as him. There are people that look similar to him. And if you saw him today, there's no way in hell he'd look the way he did back yeah. then. Yeah. I mean, even. And you wouldn't know what he looked like because he looked completely different from yeah. the beginning of his career to the end of his career. And he could afford plastic surgery, for crying out loud, so. Yeah. He could look completely different. Yeah. Um, if I was going to fake my death and I was one of the most famous people in the world, I would so go through plastic surgery. Yeah. But also, like, this whole Muhammad Ali photo, I mean, it's true that... He, oh, yeah, he we was... didn't actually tell them. Yeah. We didn't actually tell the listeners. We just said there's a photo. Yeah. So, in, um, what's the year, 1984, okay. there was a photo taken of Muhammad Ali and there's a man in the background and people say that he is Elvis. Yeah. And have you seen the photo as well? Yeah, I've seen the photo. <laughs> 
<laughs> so have I. Yeah. I, so, <laughs> what I don't get about this is, I, I understand they were, were apparently good friends, so it was... It wouldn't have been surprising that he would have maybe gone to an event where Muhammad Ali was. Yeah, but to get but pictured with him. But if he faked his death, why would you show up? At, uh, Muhammad Ali is quite famous. I mean, there's going to be a lot yeah, of just, attention. What, just quite famous? He's like, one of, yeah, he's like he's the one most of, famous yeah. boxer that In was ever lived, yeah. <laughs> you know, I would say. Why would you turn up at an event like that where you're bound to get noticed? If you're faking your death, that's... No, no, turning up an event is one thing, but you could stay backstage. Why would you come out into the public arena with yeah. a press w- and stand behind Muhammad Ali as they're taking photos of him? Yeah. Also, I've seen the photo. The guy, uh, his lips are similar. He's got the same sort of shaped yeah. face, but he's in darkness. Yeah. How can you tell anything from that photo? Yeah. I mean, It could just be a guy that yeah. looks similar to him. Personally, I don't think it looks anything like him. I think they've got the same shaped face when, like, Elvis was skinny. Yeah, maybe. And his lips are a bit pouty. So Elvis yeah. had pouty lips. So, But they're the only similarities I could see. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I can't... I don't think they look similar. <laughs> and he's in darkness anyway. Yeah. He's in the He's in the background. He's in mm. darkness. What, what, so you can't get anything definitive yeah. from that photo. What I like is the article I read that shows this photo says, um, points out the fact that he's nodding off. And so they think that's because of... Uh, you, <laughs> you read it, You read this on watchculture.com, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> so did I. Yeah. And what I like is it So says, we have the same theories. Yeah. <laughs> what I like is it says he's still hitting the drugs. <laughs> and yeah, he's possibly. still eating junk food. And that's why he's asleep. <laughs> Possibly. I was yeah. like, how could he still be alive if he was still eating all, all the junk food and on drugs? Surely he'd die by the time you were like... He'd be nearly 50 by this point. Yeah, because it was almost... Well, actually, no, it wasn't 10 years. It was seven years. Yeah. Not seven. When did... 1977, he died. Oh, seven years. I was right. Yeah. So, I mean, we both think that's bollocks, don't we? Yeah, pretty that much. One. <laughs> <laughs> Another one is um, his Elvis's longtime manager when he was living was Colonel Tom Parker. He managed him for twenty years. Yeah, twenty years is a long fucking time. And he sort of ruled over him with an yeah. iron fist. Yeah. He got involved in every aspect of his life, down to the wedding. He decided yeah. he could and couldn't go. And um, I, I think he's the one that convinced Elvis to marry her in the end. Yeah, because he didn't want to. <laughs> yeah. So. So he ruled him with an iron fist, and he benefited from Elvis dying. I think from he, I think he was written into the will, wasn't he? How much did he, I don't know how much he got. Um, but he was written into the will. Yeah, and he was a beneficiary of his uh, life insurance. Although um, I think the article that I read does point out it would be he'd still make a lot of money if Elvis was still alive. So yeah, but I didn't finish. Things, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but that's us discounting theory. I'm just going through the theory first. Yeah. All right, so Tom Parker's stepson actually happened to die in the same day and time, around the same time as Elvis. Mm. And P- and the theorist, the Elvis is Alive theorists... Yeah. Okay, this is such a funny group name. They say that perhaps there's a link between that and maybe that was the body that was buried in Elvis's stead. Yeah, <laughs> what I like is they think they... they uh, they're, um... They dressed this stepson up as El- an Elvis impersonator. So that would just make him an Elvis impersonator, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, okay, say his stepson died. Someone must have died, or there must have been a body in that bathroom. So would P- if Elvis, if Tom Parker's stepson died and they moved him to that bathroom, mm. and then he was pronounced dead, and he went through the autopsy, and then he was buried, why are people not wondering where his stepson's body is? Yeah, exactly. That's my major thing that discounts this, not that yeah. Tom Parker benefits from him being alive. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, Tom Parker, ben- I don't think he would have benefited much from him being alive, because Elvis wasn't doing much at this point. Well, he's, he's still coming back. For this game. He was still recording. Yeah, but stuff it wasn't going to go well. If his fans were becoming disgruntled, he wasn't. He wasn't actually putting as much effort into this performance. He wasn't doing anything to work for the next concert. I don't know. Well, so I, th- I think Tom Parker probably could have. Cut. I'm not saying he did. I'm hmm. not saying this theory is true or I think it's true. But I see. I see why Tom Parker would probably prefer him to be dead if he was written into the will 
and he was a beneficiary of his life insurance because Elvis wasn't really doing much and it was a struggle to get him to do anything. I mean, at, towards the end of his career, or life, should I say, they were sending recording studios to Graceland so he would record. Yeah. But even then, he wouldn't do it. So I, I could understand why he would benefit from Elvis being dead. I'm not saying I believe this theory because I don't. I think it's bollocks. Purely because uh, would people not wonder where the stepson's body went? Yeah. I mean, why would there be a report that he died if they'd moved his body and replaced and pretended that was Elvis? That's the point, actually. Yeah, so they, no one would come out and say he's died because then they would need to do an autopsy on his body. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's, like, the main reason that this isn't true. <laughs> yeah. There's <laughs> nothing to do with Tom Parker. It's just like, oh, there's a missing dead body. Someone would miss it, even if, like, Tom Parker wasn't close to his stepson. Someone would miss that body. Yeah. That, the, you've got to, you, like, you've got to have paid off, like, the autopsy people to get You've got to have paid off it. a lot of people. You've, you must they, have paid they, off a lot of people. They find out easy enough that it's not Elvis. Pretty yeah, because <laughs> he's like the most famous man in the world. Yeah, I mean, unless unless this guy's like stepson was as bad as Elvis for those like drug habit. If he's got to be like the same size to pass yeah. it off as being well, Elvis. there is a theory that uh, the person that had the autopsy done, as in mm. the person that was supposed to be Elvis, he actually only weighed 150 pounds and he had like a scar across his heart. Yeah. I don't think that's true. Well, I, I know it's not true. But yeah. that, is a th- that is a rumour that has been out there, even though people have said that's not true. Yeah. Even the coroners have said that's not true. Yeah. That, that, that one doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. Yeah. So, what's the next theory, then? Another... I, I, didn't, oh. I didn't look at all the theories, because some of them weren't interesting, so I just went for the interesting ones. Yeah. Or the ones that I think I could explain or talk about. Yeah. So, the next one I've got is um, he didn't actually... Pre- prepare for his upcoming concert tour oh, like yeah. he didn't he didn't do any prep he mm. didn't do any practice he didn't buy any costumes he didn't do anything like that so people say that's because he knew he wasn't actually going to go through with it yeah whereas me i think he's just gotten lazy and he doesn't give a shit yeah. what he looks like or how he sounds because he clearly didn't give a shit at all i mean when you're that deep into a drug addiction yeah. You, you do whatever you can to get the money or get or get the drugs somehow, mm. and nothing else matters. Also, I, I think the fact, if, if you agree that he had, like, a heart attack, some people who are about to have, like, that kind of fatal heart attack, they almost have... It's been said that um, people have that sense of, like, impending doom. Yeah, that's what I figured as well, because he knew yeah. that he was, he was on his way out of this world anyway, because he wasn't exactly the most healthiest person in the yeah. world if he hadn't figured that out, because we've said it 15,000 yeah. times. He was very unhealthy, and maybe he was just willing to die. He wanted to die. He yeah. didn't seem like the most happiest person in the world, did he? Yeah. So, mm. I mean, that, that's hardly surprising. I yeah. think they're making a bit too much out of that. <laughs> they really are. That and he's got all these costumes. He doesn't need to go out and buy more. What if he, he yeah. doesn't give a shit about his performance or his stage presence at this point? Uh, yeah, at this point, he can probably barely fit into half of the costumes he wants. Yeah, he at this point, make... he doesn't give a shit because yeah. he didn't give a shit before the last set of dates or last set of concerts. He didn't give a damn before. He was barely on stage. I think one concert lasted less than an hour. Some he didn't even show up to. Yeah. Some he just mumbled through and people can barely understand him or hear him. So yeah. clearly he didn't give a damn about his performance. Yeah. At this point. Why would you when you're taking 10,000 doses of drugs <laughs> in eight months? Yeah. Another theory I've got down is, um, uh, where has it gone? Um, apparently he, um, there's an uncashed life insurance policy. And uh, apparently the, what, what these uh, people that still believe he's alive think is the fact that no one's actually cashed in on this that mean he must be alive or somehow, or he's faked his death because nobody wants to draw attention to this. Yeah, I, I actually Googled this one and was like, I can find no evidence mm. of there being information out there about yeah. his life insurance policy because, again, that's against the law for them to release that. Yeah. So how would these people know that it's been uncashed? Yeah. And surely, if he's died, it's more sp- suspicious if someone yeah. doesn't cash their life insurance policy in. Well, that's, that's what they're saying. It's suspicious. No, no, it's more suspicious if someone doesn't... Yeah, so they would cash it in. They're not stupid, are they? They know how it works. Yeah, but what these people are saying is the fact... I know, these believers are saying that they're double-bluffing them, but why would they do that? Mm. I don't understand that. I don't know. It's a difficult one, that. 
Yeah, because the life insurance thing, obviously they would cash it in because part of him dying is... what? Okay, so if I was to fake my death, right, and I had life insurance policy, I would make sure that someone cashed it for me so then I had the money to start a new life. Yeah. Because he's dead. Elvis Presley is dead. He doesn't have any money anymore. Yeah. So I I know he's probably tried to tuck some away somewhere for, like, tax, tax purposes. There's only so much he could do. Like, if he has a life insurance policy in the millions... That is the first thing I would do, is cash that in. Yeah. Get someone to cash it in for me, so I can start my new life. I don't... See, the thing is, he he is, like, um... He's, like, the record for most earnings of a dead person. So he'd still be able to live on... Yeah, but he wouldn't get that money. Because he's dead. Yeah, but if if he's faked his death and people around him know that, he'd still be able to get the money. Possibly. So... Possibly. But also, I don't believe it, because I think... There's no way they could know that they haven't cashed in the life insurance policy. Mm. Also, life insurance policies tend to be for, like, family members. It tends to be for, like, it would be his, like, daughter or something like that. Yeah, it would be the daughter or the wife. They wouldn't usually put down, oh, my maid. Yeah. I mean, actually, who knows? You can do... I, th- I think you can specify who you want it left to, because they want yeah. beneficiaries and you have to select them. But, yeah, usually it's just a family member. Yeah. But, yeah, clearly, he had a child, I assume that... That would be the only beneficiary. I think to she's quite rich herself, from what I remember. Well, yeah, because she's got his publishing rights, doesn't yeah. she? So, so she has great. She uh, she she inherited most. I think the only ones in her in the will were family members and um, Parker. Yeah. So, so I, yeah. I, I, she wouldn't even probably need that life insurance policy. Probably not. And she's a musician herself, right? So yeah. I think she's big. Well, I don't think she's that big here. Not that I know. No. Again, I don't know anything about music, but. Well, I know, um, she, she appeared, um, she dated Michael Jackson for a while. Yeah, I was about to say that. She dated Michael Jackson, who sort of died the same way yeah. <laughs> as Elvis Presley. She's a curse. And also, there's rumours about Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. About him being alive. Yeah, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't date him. I think she was married to him for a couple of years. Both of them were paedophiles. Yeah. <laughs> Could that Michael Jackson, if if the allegations... Well, because I, I wouldn't call Michael Jackson a, a paedophile because that wasn't confirmed, as in he wasn't found guilty. So we can speculate, OK? But Elvis Presley, we know he was. Still because, that Come on, it's bed. all public record. <laughs> shh, shh. <clears throat> but, yeah, to, between you and I, yeah. the speculation, I believe the speculation about Michael Jackson is true because his bro- his father fucked him over as a child. Fucked him over what? I, I don't mean literally, <laughs> but he, he had, oh, a, yeah, he got he had a terrible him, yeah. father. I, 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 he had I, a terrible father. I feel sorry father. for like, him in that sense. But no, I feel sorry for all of those Jackson kids. They all ended up yeah. weird because of that fucking father who yeah. should have had their kids taken away from them. I think any like parent manager that pushes their child to do something they don't want to do yeah. should have their child taken away from them. Yeah. Because... Uh, there'd be more well-adjusted people in the world. Like, Lindsay Lohan, she didn't have the mum that was pushing her to be famous. Yeah. Do you think she would have ended up the way she is now? Probably not. A, like a lot of child yeah. stars, they go down. It's not their fault. I mean, sure, it gets to a certain age where they have to take responsibility for themselves, but it's the parents. The parents yeah. let them either get away with this stuff or push them to do it. Yeah. So, I think Mike Jackson is... His dad's called Joe Jackson. Basically, Joe Jackson should have had your kids taken away from you, really. Yeah. yeah, he does sound like a twat. From he's what a I bad parent. Yeah. He's a, he's not just a bad parent. He's a bad person. Yeah, I hope he. Ha- I ha- he doesn't have any contact with Michael Jackson's kids, does he? I don't think. So. Well, I don't think he's even got that much contact with the rest of the family. Good. From what I remember, good. Reading. I'm glad they told him to do one. Yeah. Well, yeah, because he was abusive first of all, because he beat the crap out of them. Yeah, and he pushed them to do all this stuff. Also, like Michael also Jackson probably would have been saying He benefits from the money they make as well, so... Yeah, I know. That's why they pushed him to do it. Yeah. Like, the guy that played Uncle Fester in the Adams Family, he was a proper child star. What's his name? The Coogan somewhat... Something Coogan, right? I don't know. I'm not, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. You know the Adams Family? Very brief, vaguely. Well, the guy that played Uncle Fester, the bald guy, yeah. he was a massive child actor when he was younger. Oh. Right, and yeah. um, his parents basically just screwed him out of all his money. Yeah. I, look, I think the same happened to Macaulay Culkin, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He's He's gone a bit weird now as well, hasn't he? Basically, well, I think he sorted himself out a bit. Basically, if, if you're... 
taking your child to an audition, I think there should be, like, a member of social services at every audition for a child. Yeah. To, to meet the parents as well. Yeah. I just think it would be better if there weren't child stars. Yeah. So I'm do honest. I. I do. But then technology is getting better, so I think they're going to end up phasing out children. We'll probably have CGI children in films instead. <laughs> yeah. Which, no, but I genuinely think they'd be better off. Because yeah. kids, they... You they know, shouldn't be put into that world. If they want to act, fine. Send them to, like, drama classes or something, or they could do stage plays or something like that in their community <laughs> centre. Yeah. That's fine. But they shouldn't be put on TV, they shouldn't be put in films, they shouldn't be put on a massive stage where the whole world can watch them, the whole world can criticise them, the whole yeah. world can worship them, where anyone can take advantage with the, of them because the parents, after they've signed them away, they don't have any control over what they do. Yeah. So anyone could take advantage of them. Anyway, I think we should actually get back to what we're supposed to be talking about this episode. Yeah. So we did the life insurance, we did the Ali, we did the sightings, we did the stepson. Oh, there's an album released in the year 2000. Yeah. Forgotten the name of the album because I didn't write it down. Oh, but, I don't know which one you're talking about. Um, yeah, something King something. Yeah, for what I know, it's actually an impersonator singing. Yes, because it's all songs thing, sung after Elvis. Yeah, died. no songs that were written after he died. And an imperson- uh, the official, and that the official thing is an impersonator was actually singing. And I've heard some Elvis impersonators; they sound really close yeah. to the real thing. Because some people are brilliant mimics. Yeah. Like, they could just... If they hear something, they can copy it. Yeah. So it sounds... Yeah, some um, Elvis impersonators sound brilliant. So the official reason... The official line, not reasoning. official line is that this is impersonator sang the songs. And it's like an uh, homage to Elvis. Yeah. And the Elvis is Alive <laughs> band of people actually believe that it is Elvis and that's his music and he wrote it and he released it. Because it sounds so similar to Elvis. Yeah. And it also supports their silly theory that Elvis is actually living now as an Elvis impersonator. Yeah, he can't resist releasing an album. Yeah. Because, like, if you're faking your death, you yeah. obviously want to get away from the life that you're living. You, if you're Elvis Presley and you fake your death, you do not have a cover <laughs> as an Elvis per- Presley impersonator. <laughs> sure, you could be the best Elvis and Presley impersonator there is, but that's not what your cover life should be. And then you do not release an album I paying homage to yourself. <laughs> yeah. I don't Because, be genius, in all honesty, though. if he did do that, he'd just be a dick. <laughs> but a genius, <laughs> A ch- yeah, to be fair, yeah, we wouldn't look at the impersonators, would we? <laughs> but then could you imagine if he actually entered into one of those Elvis impersonator yeah. competitions and lost? Oh, my. That, that's, <laughs> they've had, like, weird things happen to people like that, though, haven't they? What do you mean? Oh, who's it? Um, was it Charlie... Which was it? One of them. One of those, like, um, Charlie Chaplin, he went into a Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest or something like that, and apparently yeah. came second or something like that. <laughs> they've they've had like yeah actual incidents where people have gone into their own like lookalike competitions and they've lost. That sounds brilliant, actually. But then if you're narcissistic enough to go into that kind of thing, in a way, yeah. you de- kind of deserve. To Maybe sometimes it. you just find it fun to do that. Yeah. But then if I was famous, I'd probably just judge it. Yeah. I'd I'd like to judge it. Actually, it might be fun to enter it to be honest. Yeah. Just to see, because people are just going to think, oh, that's someone that is impersonating her. Yeah. And in the end, if I don't win, whether I do or don't win, I will announce myself and people are just think, oh my God, I'm such a huge fan. Yeah. Actually, yeah, it's an egotistical thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's that theory. Another theory, there's, I, this is the last one I've got down because it's the last one I found interesting. You can go into more if you have some. These are all from, all the ones that I've said are from watchculture.com, by the way. Because they compiled a list of all the ones from the internet, so it's just easier using that. Anyway, so you know how celebrities, sometimes when they're checking into a hotel or a restaurant and they don't want a big fuss, yeah. and they don't want fans finding out, they don't use their real name, they have an alias. Yeah. Like, I would use, I don't know, should I, I'd use, like, Lady something. Yeah. So I get, like, five-star service when I show up. Yeah. But Elvis decided to go for John Burroughs. You know that unique name, John Burroughs? <laughs> and um, the day that he died, there was actually a one-way ticket from Memphis to Buenos Aires. Yeah. Under the name of John Burroughs. Again, such a unique name. Yeah. 
And again, there's no evidence to this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just something someone said. Yeah. Because, again, I did Google it, and it's like, I don't find any evidence. Yeah. It's just some people saying this. Yeah, and, I mean, even if a John Burroughs did go to Buenos Aires, I mean, it could just be John Burroughs. Exactly. <laughs> El- Elvis could have got that name from, like, just reading a local paper or something. Yeah, he could. It, and he didn't need to read anything. It's just like, John Burroughs is just a name. Yeah. There's probably a million of them in the world right now. Yeah. But John's a common name, common first name. Yeah. Burroughs is a common surname. Yeah. Just put them together. The reason that they get picked as aliases is because they're common and no one would think twice about it. Yeah. Common means there's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't, yeah, I just, I just think these people are classing at straws. Yeah. The last one is the picture of the, um, the, um, body in the casket, actually. Because, get this, Elvis's cousin was so classy that he took payment to take a picture of Elvis in the in the um, casket yeah. at the funeral. Who fucking does that, first of all? We just go into that for a minute. Who the fuck would do that? <laughs> Even if you weren't a close cousin. Yeah. Like, I don't care what amount of money that I get paid. If, say, you died, and I got... Pa- I don't know why the Guardian will want to pay me 100 grand uh, to take a picture of you in your casket. I'd just be like, even I'm too good for that? <laughs> like seriously <laughs> who does that some people are disgusting man yeah like when i read that i was just like oh man he elvis really did surround himself with the wrong people didn't he yeah. like, i guess that's his cousin you can't really choose to be fair i choose my cousins cousins tend I was to like, be I, I, yeah, I was yeah. Like, i don't really like you much so we're not gonna hang out so yeah, yeah. i'll see you in about 10 years at a random wedding that we have to be to be at together yeah or some, but yeah, what, someone's so, funeral yeah, so, where they're taking yeah. pictures. Or, yeah, <laughs> or, or my funeral when you're taking a picture of me. Anyway, so this dick cousin took a picture yeah. of him and sold it to a paper. And um, fans say that that picture does not look like him. He's an impersonator. First of all, he's dead, all right? Yeah, you don't tend to look exactly yeah. like you were when you were alive. <laughs> he would look a hell of a lot different from when he was making his public appearances because it all went downhill. Because it just yeah. got worse and worse. He got fatter and fatter. His looks were degrading even more. Yeah. And secondly, I saw the picture. It does kind of look like him. Yeah. It does look like him. He looks rested and peaceful. Yeah. yeah. I heard someone say that it's a waxwork in there or something like that. I was like... Why? Because it's stiff. Uh, let me tell you something. Dead bodies, they're stiff. They go through this thing called rigor mortis. Mm. Everything gets stiff. Yeah. All right? That's why they look like statues, because they are like statues, basically. Pretty much. So, yeah, that, that's a silly theory, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the uh, only other theory I, I looked at that I've seen is the uh, pool house door photo at Graceland. But what... what oh, yeah, that one, What yeah. I think so idiotic about this one is he's faked his death, and he's come, back, he's come back to Graceland, where that's the first place you'd expect to find him. I mean... That, and I don't think he actually looks like Elvis. Yeah, it's uh, apparently... He like him. Someone said um, it's actually one of his former wardrobe yeah, managers. Yeah, yeah, it's the staff. It's like... <laughs> so if someone's already come out and said, no, that's someone else, actually. Yeah. And he doesn't look like Elvis. Yeah, I mean, he's got sideburns, and that's about literally it. He's got sideburns and he's got longer hair as well. Yeah, it's the closest they've got. <laughs> sideburns. Even if he did, yeah. even if he did fake his death and go back home, that's fine, right? Yeah. But he wouldn't be hanging out, hanging out by windows if he's j- if the most famous yeah. rock and roll star of all time has just died and everyone knows where he lives. So fans are going to be coming just to see the yeah. house, just to pay their respects, leave their flowers. He's not going to be standing in front of a window. Yeah. <laughs> Because no one's that fucking thick. I'd hope not. Even a guy, you know, off his if head he on drugs. If he was that thick... To, <laughs> no, no, if he was that thick at that point, because that happened fairly soon after he died, yeah. then there is no way he would have gone this long without being found out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that one. so... I mean, I just... <laughs> uh, he gave back to Graceland. I mean, it's the it's just where you expect to find him. I mean, if you're faking your death, that's the stupidest thing to ever do. Yeah, because everyone's there. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's really silly. So, we didn't even tell them what side we support, but I think we've made it clear what side that we support. Yeah. He's dead, people. And I think the most prudent evidence of him being dead is this, right? Yeah. He died in a toilet. 
<laughs> in a toilet. If you're going to fake your death, <laughs> you're not going to die in the toilet. Like, if I was going to fake my death, I'd pretend to go skydiving mm. or something. Something really cool that would make me seem really interesting. I would not die in a toilet if I had, cho- if I had a choice. Mm. If you were going to die, you would not die in a toilet. Yeah, it, it, it isn't the best place. It's not the most dignified way of going. No, it's not. Mm. The only other thing I can think happened to him is he f- accidentally flushed himself down the toilet and he's mm-hmm. maybe in the pipes somewhere. How just kind shit? of singing. Yeah, so there is a point. But <laughs> suction, a suction can do things to you. So uh, they've got to just look if there's any enlarging enlargement in the pipes and see if mm. you can hear it. He could still be singing down there, you know? If you, if you say so. Yeah. I think that's yeah. one of the more <laughs> sensible theories we've had, though. It's better than some of the other ones from this Elvis is Alive group. Yeah, we know that they don't speak any sense, all right? Yeah. Because Elvis, it would be in... I love how every time that I'm trying to say something, like when yeah. I'm doing my sum up, and how I always disagree with a the theory. Yeah. But I always start with, it would be interesting if it was true. Yeah. Like, every single episode. But it's true. Mm. It, it would be interesting if it was true. But it's not... I mean, I guess it's... Some people are diehard Elvis fans and mm. they just want to know that he's out there. But he lived a troubled life. Yeah. And, and it's over now. So he should be at peace. Mm. Because he was not the healthiest man in the world. It would have gotten worse. Yeah. So he's he's probably lucky that he got out early, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, I, I've, just, I've got my theory. I know what. Okay. It, he did go to Buenos Aires. Yeah. Because he wanted to be with Hitler out in South America. <laughs> These two, they, they're meant to be dead, but they're still alive, really. Out he there. was in Germany in the 50s. Yeah, exactly. That's where he met Hitler. Hitler, Hitler would have Hitler, faked his death before that. Yeah, Hitler did. I mean, Hitler, because these guys, I mean, they're a little bit stupid. They, Hit, Elvis went back to Graceland <laughs> for a bit. Hitler went back to Germany. <laughs> 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 he just milling around, you know, the government offices or wherever in Berlin. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, and then they went out to Buenos Aires together. It's quite romantic okay, and touching, then. I think. Okay, then. Yeah, that's what um, I think. All right, then, if you say so. Yeah. You know what? The the Elvis is Alive group, they're, they're so deluded, they'll probably latch onto that theory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm glad that we breezed through everything, because look at how long this has gone yeah. on for. I'm so glad we breezed through his life. Yeah. Because if we had gone ages. into detail, it would have been like three hours long. <laughs> yeah. But some of the theories are so stupid. Like, it's like, they are. That's why I didn't, I didn't write down all of them, because I'm just like, no, I don't need to talk about that, because that's just a bit too stupid. Yeah. So I only wrote down a few of them because I'm just like that's enough to get through. If Elvis is alive, you can email us at um, the at gmail.com. dot com. Or you could Facebook us because we're on Facebook, <laughs> or you could tweet us because we're on Twitter. And I think our, our Twitter handle is at Dorks Deduction because they have that character limit. It's something like that. You should be able to search us and find us. Yeah. Yeah. I say find us. Matt, you don't do fuck all for this. What? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we hope you enjoyed the episode. We're sorry if we bummed you out at the beginning, because by the time this has gone out, you've probably a bit f- forgotten a little bit about what just happened. Yeah. It's fresh for us. And now we're bringing it they, up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry if we brought it up again, but we needed to vent a little bit, and yeah. we thought we'd be a sentimental for once. Yeah. And then I'm sorry that we forgot that the actual episode was about a death as well, so we probably bummed you out even more. Yeah. Basically, we're sorry for bumming you out this whole episode. Yeah, we really didn't mean to. Didn't mean to, it's just... We've had some major deaths in our life in the past week. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And if you didn't realise Elvis is already dead, then you're sorry Sorry, about that as well. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I think I can say goodbye, because we actually did everything. We got through everything. Yeah. (laughs) Which I just found surprising. So, um, goodbye from me. And ad- adios. Is that what they say in Buenos Aires? No, Spain. Where is Buenos Aires? Argentina. So, probably, actually. Yeah, they probably that, do say Yeah, that. they do. They speak Spanish in Argentina, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Okay. So, um, Matt's going to head off to Argentina to meet up with Hitler and Elvis. Elvis. I'm just going to wait for death so I can re- reconnect with Alan Rickman. No. Yeah, so, so if I didn't bum you out during the episode, I've bombed <laughs> yeah. you out now. <laughs>
<laughs> right. Goodbye. Okay, yeah, goodbye. <laughs>